Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Welcome everyone, kids in the room, adults, families. Uh, we are so excited you are here. My name is Andrew. I'm Jane. And we have a special guest again. Welcoming. Georgie. Georgie, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, Andrew, thank you. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too. All right, so uh, again, welcome to our first ever episode of this show that we like to call, wait, Jane, what are we calling it? Uh, I don't think this show has a name. What? We don't have a name. It doesn't have a name? It's kind of embarrassing. Um, what should we do? I'm panicking. Uh, wait, Andrew, Andrew, what? Jane, I have an idea. What if, I bet, the kids who are watching this right now, I bet they have some really good big ideas and they could come up for, with a name for us. Those kids right there? Right in that camera, right there. So ask them for names, Jane. What, what do you think about that idea? I love that, that's great. Okay, okay, let's roll with it. Kids in the room, think of a name for this show. All right, and whatever you come up with, I want you to think about it, tell the adults in your room, and I will reach out to them and collect all these names, and we'll take a vote. And this show will be called that forever and ever. Great awesome. idea, that's a great idea. All right, uh, Jane, what are we doing today? Yeah, so we have a lot of fun activities planned today for you. We have some singing and a story and some activities that will get you moving. Nice. All right, that stuff sounds like so much fun. You know what? Let's get to it. Let's do this. All right, friends, before we do anything else, we gotta take a moment and wish some people a very happy birthday, okay? And you know what? I have the perfect squad of people, the birthday squad. Where are you at, birthday squad? Birthdays! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> this is Andy over here, and this is Jude. Say hi. Hi! All right, friends, I love birthdays so, so much. Do you love birthdays? I really love birthdays. What do you love about them? I love the presents, I love Balloons, I love cake. Cake, yes. Jude, how about you? I love birthdays too. My favorite part is the ice cream. Oh, <gasps> ice cream, cake, presents, all of it. I love them so much. And you know what? What's so great about birthdays too is that it means you get one year older. And it means you're a little bit wiser and a little bit bigger. And uh, the same amount of awesome, all right? Friends, I think what we need to do right now is sing happy birthday. Let's sing happy birthday. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> me, 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 me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Rosabella. Nathan. Thatcher. Brody. Oliver. Aviana. Emery. Myla. Karen. Henry. Lenny. Andy. <sighs> Happy birthday to you! Good job! Nice. Thanks! Happy birthday! Hi friends! How are you today? No, really, how are you doing today? I think that it's very, very important at this time that we ask ourselves, how are we doing? Not like when a, an adult asks you how you're doing. I mean, how are you really doing? You know how you have that favorite stuffed animal that you go and secretly talk to kids? That, that favorite stuffed animal that you say, oh, I didn't really have a good day at school today. Those are the feelings that I'm talking about. Those are the feelings that I want you to explore talking to adults about. And parents, we're always busy taking care of all the hearts around us. So it's important for us all, both kids and adults, to ask ourselves how we're doing. And when you ask yourself how you're doing, you should tell somebody about how you're doing. If you're not feeling so good, if you're having a bad day, Tell someone you're having a bad day. And if you're having an amazing, super fantastic day, you know those super fantastic days that you tell your stuffed animal that you're having? Mm -hmm. Those days. Make sure you tell your family and friends about those days too. And parents, I know we're super, 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 super busy. 
but be open to listening to see how the kids are doing. And kids, be open to checking in on your parents when they walk in the door, you know, when you give them that great big hug. Ask them, say, Mommy, Daddy, Grandma, Grandpa, how are you doing? And ask your friends how they're doing too. Because sometimes our friends, we might see them more than we see our family. But with things changing up, the way it's changed up, okay, you got going back to school, you got some people where they're in school online, and then what about the people that are going, the, the kids? What about the kids that are going to school online and going to school in person? We gotta check on each other. It's time to ask the question, how are you feeling? When school started back for me, I started getting butterflies in my stomach. I started getting a little nervous. I didn't know if I was going to get sick or what was going to happen. Did you get those feelings too? Well, you, now is a great time to talk about it. So if you're nervous about going back to school, uh, if you're happy about going back to school, if you're excited about seeing your friends and family, talk about it. Your family and friends, they need to hear about it. Talk about it. It's important to talk about how you're feeling right now. So parents, as you hit that pause button right now, as you hit the pause button, I want you to ask the kids and ask yourself, how are you feeling right now? And don't forget the stuffed animals. Make sure you ask your stuffed animal how he or she is doing, okay? Because they need to know too. Because maybe your stuffed animal is having a little bit of anxiety because you're having anxiety. You know your stuffed animals and your family and your friends with empathy going on, we feel the same things. I, I feel when, when my stuffed animal is upset or when my friends and family are upset, I feel a little bit upset. And when they're happy, ooh, 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 I feel extremely, extremely happy. So let somebody in on how you're feeling so they can help you feel happy or give you a great big hug when you're not feeling at your best. Hi, my name is a Andy Hobbs. I go to Avail Academy and I'm in fourth grade. How are you feeling about being back at school? Um, it feels good after a six-month quarantine. I like seeing my friends again. Um, yeah, I get kind of bored in front of the screen for six months, so... Hi, I'm Charlie. Hi, and I'm Chloe. What is the toughest thing about school this year? Um, the having to do everything online. The toughest thing for me is, um, having to stare at a screen for like six hours and having to be on time for every Google Meet. I like to laugh, I like to smile, but sometimes I find my smile takes a while. Sometimes I'm nervous, sometimes I'm sad, but hear me when I say those feelings ain't bad, feelings ain't bad, feelings ain't bad. I know sometimes they feel scary But these feelings are feelings that everyone has So if you feel happy or mad I promise these feelings are feelings I've had Feelings I've had Feelings I've had takes a while. Sometimes I'm nervous, sometimes I'm sad, but hear me when I say those feelings ain't bad. Feelings ain't bad. Feelings ain't bad.
what you feel is alright. What you feel is alright. I like to laugh, I like to smile, but sometimes I find my smile takes a while. So if you feel nervous or if you feel sad Remember what I said Those feelings ain't bad Feelings ain't bad Feelings ain't bad My name is Jane again, and I'm here to introduce the theme that we will be talking about these next couple weeks. So a long time ago, there was someone who wrote a story in the Bible about how God created everything. And I mean everything. In Genesis 1:31, it says that God saw everything God had made and it was very good. To me, that is amazing that God created everything, anything that you can think of. This includes the stars, this includes water, the plants and animals and people like you and me, even the soil and the ground that we walk on, God made. So I think God did a pretty good job creating everything, don't you think? So one more time, Genesis 1:31. God saw everything God had made and it was very good. Did you also know that there are a ton of languages in Minnesota and maybe a ton in your hometown where you live right now? So today we are going to take this verse that we just learned, Genesis 131. God saw everything God had made and it was very good and translate it to two different languages. Our first language that we are going to talk about today is French. And some of you might already know some French, maybe go to a school where you speak French, and maybe this is a new language that you're going to learn today. So unfortunately, I don't know French, but we have our friend Elsa who translated the verse for us and is going to share that with us today. Et Dieu vit tout ce qu'il avait fait, et voici, cela était très bon. Thanks, Elsa, so much for sharing that verse with us in French. So the second language that we are going to do is American Sign Language, or ASL, and this language is actually used when communicating with someone who has trouble hearing or is deaf, and you use your hands to sign motions and communicate with each other that way. So we have a video here that is this verse in American Sign Language, and it goes kind of fast, so feel free to pause the video and rewind and watch as many times as you want and try to pick up on this woman's facial expressions and how her hands move. Now, after learning ASL and the Bible verse, not only did God think that everything was very good, but God is good to all, good to everyone. And so God shows that he has deep concern for everything that God has made. And so this includes you and me. And so maybe when you are concerned about someone like a friend, that you would show in your body language that you are worried about them. So maybe you'd lean up close or you would sit down and look them in the eye and ask them how they are. So God is very good at communicating to us too. And one of those ways that he communicates to us is through nature. And so today we are going to learn about how God communicates to us through soil and water. So stay tuned for that. Hi everybody, I'm Michelle Moser. I uh, am reading to you today. And the message for uh, this season is God is good to all and God has deep concern for all that God has made. I am going to read to you today a book called Old Turtle. Here's a picture of it. And I am the mom to Jillian, who's in fifth grade, and to Griffin, who's in third grade, here at our church community. Old Turtle is a story that's uh, written by Douglas Wood, 
and it has watercolors in it by Chang Ki Chi. Here we go. Once, long, long ago, yet somehow not so very long, when all the animals and rocks and winds and waters and trees and birds and fish and all the beings of the world could speak and understand one another, there began an argument. It began softly at first, quiet as the first breeze that whispered, he is a wind who is never still. Quiet as the stone that answered, he is a great rock that never moves. Gentle as the mountain that rumbled, God is a snowy peak, high above the clouds. And the fish in the ocean that answered, God is a swimmer in the dark blue depths of the sea. No, said the star, God is a twinkling and a shining far, far away. No, replied the ant, God is a sound and a smell and a feeling who is very, very close. God, said the antelope, is a runner, swift and free, who loves to leap and race with the wind. She is a great tree, murmured the willow, a part of the world, always growing and always giving. You are wrong, argued the island. God is separate and apart. God is like the shining sun, far above all things, said the blue sky. No, he is a river who flows through the very heart of things, thundered the waterfall. She is a hunter, roared the lion. God is gentle, chirped the robin. He is powerful, growled the bear. And the argument grew louder and louder and louder until... Stop! A new voice spoke. It rumbled loudly like thunder, and it whispered softly like butterfly sneezes. The voice seemed to come from... Why, it seemed to come from... Old Turtle. Now, Old Turtle hardly ever said anything and certainly never argued about things like God. But now Old Turtle began to speak. God is indeed deep, she said to the fish in the sea, and much higher than high, she told the mountains. He is swift and free as the wind and still and solid as a great rock, she said to the breezes and stones. She is the life of the world, Turtle said to the willow. Always close by, yet beyond the farthest twinkling light, she told the ant and the star. God is gentle and powerful, above all things and within all things. God is all that we dream of and all that we seek, said Old Turtle, all that we come from and all that we can find. God is. Old Turtle had never said so much before. All the beings of the world were surprised and became very quiet. But Old Turtle had one more thing to say. There will soon be a new family of beings in the world, she said, and they will be strange and wonderful. They will be reminders of all that God is. They will come in many colors and shapes, with different faces and different ways of speaking. Their thoughts will soar to the stars, but their feet will walk the earth. They will possess many powers. They will be strong, yet tender, a message of love from God to the earth, and a prayer from the earth back to God. And the people came, but the people forgot. They forgot that they were a message of love and a prayer from the earth. And they began to argue about who knew God and who did not, and where God was and was not, and whether God was or was not. And often the people misused their powers, or hurt one another, or killed one another, and they hurt the earth, until finally even the forests began to die. and the rivers, and the oceans, and the plants, and the animals, and the earth itself, because the people could not remember who they were or where God was, until one day there came a voice, like the growling of thunder, but as soft as butterfly sneezes. Please stop. The voice seemed to come from the mountain who rumbled, Sometimes I see God swimming in the dark blue depths of the sea, and from the ocean who sighed, he is often among the snow-capped peaks, reflecting the sun. From the stone, who said, I sometimes feel her breath as she blows by. And from the breeze, who whispered, I feel his still presence as I dance among the rocks. And the star said, God is very close. And the island said, his love touches everything. 
And after a long, lonesome, and scary time, the people listened and began to hear and to see God in one another and in the beauty of all the earth. An old turtle smiled. And so did God. The end. Hello, my name is Robin. Um, so something about soil and um, water is if they go together and you plant flower seeds, you can pour the water on soil in the ground and it will form a beautiful, beautiful flower. Soil is dirt that you plant trees in. And you feed it water so it grows. Water can grow plants. And is worms it? can make soil. Worms can make garbage into dirt. Hello, girls and boys. It's Bob with Colonial Church. I'm the custodian here, and, and I'm the guy that walks around and does this. I go So it's good to be back here talking to you. I miss you guys. Today we're going to talk about soil. What is the difference between dirt and soil? Dirt is soil where it's not supposed to be. It's like my hands aren't soily, they're dirty. And if, if it's on the grass, it's erosion. So there's, it's just a matter of where you want it to be. And, and another big difference is soil is alive. There's all kinds of little organisms in there that keep things healthy in the soil and make the trees grow. It's fun to make things out of soil. Uh, I don't know what, what kind of things have you made? Have you made mud pies or little castles or just towers, uh, maybe some mud drawings. And you know what God makes with soil? God makes people. That's right. God makes you and I and your family from things that grow in the soil. So here I've got some, it's like we had tomato, potatoes growing here and you've eaten potatoes. So this is where they come from right here. And God, I planted a piece of a potato, like back in May. And I put it in the ground and then I just kind of forgot about it. And God knows what to do with that. God will take that and he makes a potato out of it. I don't know how to do that. I just put it in the soil. And the soil is a gift from God. And he makes us grow. And just the same way that he makes us grow with things he, from the soil, if you, listen to God's word, it will plant on your heart and beautiful things will grow there too. You'll become a better person, you'll be a happier person, and you'll have a lot more friends, at least good friends. So remember, soil is good unless it's on your mom's kitchen floor. Thanks kids. Oh, Andrew, I had such a great time learning about soil from Bob. Yeah, I, I learned a lot. Thank you, Bob, for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but Georgie, now it's our turn. All right, we're gonna share some some facts about something just as important to God's garden as soil. We're gonna be talking about water. All right, now when you think about water, there's a lot of different types of bodies of water. Um, Georgie, can can you think of some? Like like a river? Totally. Okay, how about a creek? That's right. What about a stream? Yes. Okay, uh, how about a juice box? Uh, no, no. I mean, those are those are delicious, but I don't think they're technically bodies of water. Uh, can can you think of something else? Uh, no, nah, I'm just thinking about juice boxes. <laughs> All right, I, I'll help you. Um, here's a hint. Minnesota is the land of ten thousand juice boxes. You're really thinking about juice boxes a lot, huh? Yeah. Georgie, Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes. Oh, lakes, I, I knew that. Yeah, so, uh, but here's the thing. With water, uh, a unique thing about water, an important attribute that it has, mm -hmm. uh, is that it has cohesion. Co uh, Cohesion? <laughs> Co cohesion, Georgie. Do you, do you know what cohesion means? Uh, no, I, I don't. Let's let's ask the kids out there. Who knows what cohesion means? If you know the answer, just yell it out right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. Loud, you can answer louder. Yup. Yeah, okay. I got it. I got it. Great answers. 
For the kid who yelled out, I just want a juice box right now, I see you. Hilarious. Awesome. <laughs> Andrew. Uh, yeah, Georgie. I, 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 I'm, I, I think I get it now. Cohesion, right? It basically means like sticking together. Right. Right? Like, uh, like, um, like gum on the bottom of your shoe. Oh, yeah. Or like when you, when you uh, glue paper together, right? It sticks together. Yeah, that's exactly right. And with water, when it has cohesion, uh, the water droplets, the tiny little droplets, they stick together. Mm. Like, like think about when you see a raindrop coming down the window. Oh yeah, I love watching raindrops. Totally. And sometimes they crash into each other. Like when a raindrop hits another raindrop, does it bounce off? No, it, 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 it combines with the other raindrop. Yeah, they become like a, a big raindrop, like a super raindrop. Totally. It's like, a, it's like a super raindrop. And that's cohesion in water. The water connects, it becomes sticky. Um, Georgie, let's, let's do a demonstration right now. Oh, okay. Let's show them what we're talking about. All right. Uh, here you can see we have a pitcher of water, we got a little cup of water, and we got a little water droplet here. Uh, Georgie, can you fill up this cup with water as best you can? Oh, sure, I sure can Just try. As, as best as you can, and, and I'll help you. Yep. So good. That's great. Okay, awesome. So that's pretty full. Okay. I'm gonna make it even more full. Georgia, you did a great job. Thanks. So this is gonna be a very full cup of water. Now, before anyone starts panicking and we're thinking that maybe the water will overflow, we're gonna show you when water sticks together, when those little water po uh, molecules stick together, it keeps it from overflowing. So we're gonna keep going. We're gonna add water as an entire vial of water. We're gonna keep going, George. Okay. We're gonna go wild here. We're gonna just keep adding water. Keep more adding water. water? More water, that's right. Cohesion is holding it all together. Wow. So we just learned some things about water and how cohesion helps the water particles stick together. They're being held together. Do you know what holds all things together? Well, the Bible says that Jesus holds all creation together. Now, what is the Bible? Some of you might be wondering that. That's a great question. Well, the Bible is a book with a collection of history and poetry, some stories and letters about many, many things. And one of the most important things is the history about how God, who is spirit, was born as a little baby and had a mom named Mary. This baby's name was Jesus. Uh, the book called the Bible tells, tells us lots of things about the life of Jesus. So when the Bible says that Jesus holds all creation together, it's really saying that God's Spirit, which is breath, life, light, and love, holds all creation together. When we think about creation, we're thinking about the sun and the moon, the water and the air, plants and trees, animals and people. All of creation is connected to one another and held together by God. Since God has a deep care for the things that God has made, we also need to have a deep care for those things. Because it's all connected. One way we can do that is by going on a nature walk and appreciating all the things around us. So right now, Georgie and I, we're gonna go on a nature walk and walk around the campus here at church and just appreciate all the things that God has made. Yeah, for sure. I'm super excited, Andrew, because uh, I love being outside and seeing the birds, yeah. and feeling the wind rush through my hair. It's gonna be great. Maybe you could take a dip in the pond. Maybe. Let's go. Hey friends, whenever you're walking around the garden or around the church here, if you notice any of these signs, like this one, it says nodding onion, right? Community members have planted uh, vegetables and flowers all throughout this church. So when you're walking around, be sure to be on the lookout for signs just like this. Sometimes when you're out walking, you might see trash that people have left behind. An easy way to care for creation is just to pick up after yourself. And even if you didn't make the mess, cleaning it up and leaving places nicer than when you first got. Andrew, can I have some help? Uh, okay, thanks. Over here, brother. Uh, nice. Nice. Georgie, that was a great walk. Man, it sure was. I loved all the things that we saw. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It was awesome. 
So, families at home, we encourage you to go on your own nature walk. Mm -hmm. Go for a walk around your neighborhood. Maybe find a park that's nearby. If you see any trash, Georgie, pick it up. Pick it up. Take care of God's creation. And we encourage you to take some pictures or videos of your walk and have the adults in your family send it to me and then we will feature and highlight some of those pictures and videos in our next episode. Thanks everyone for tuning in to our first episode. Time went by really fast, so hope to see you next week in person, October 11th at 9.30 a.m. at Colonial Church. So hope to see you there. Um, before we end our time together, I have a prayer that I would love for you to read together. The words will be on the screen, so just follow along with me. Thank you, Mother Earth. We love to play and enjoy your soil and water. Thank you, Jesus. Soil and water is in every living thing. Help us, great spirit, to take good care of our friends, soil and water. Amen. Thanks again. <laughs>